This is chapter eight slippage. For today's lecture, we're going to focus on this flow net, basically discussing two things. One, I'll talk about some flow net basics and also two, how do we use flow nets to solve slippage problems? So first, flow nets basically is a graphic illustration of how total head or total energy distributes as water flows through soil. So flow nets, in essence, is a, it's a graphic solution to Laplace equation for practical engineering problems. And to illustrate some of the basic definitions for flow nets, I'm going to use the one on the left, a sheet pile here, to talk about these different family of lines and how do we use flow nets to solve CPH problem. Very briefly, a uh, sheet pile is basically a returning structure. Shown on these slides, this is a picture of a steel sheet pile, and you have all these steel sheets interlocked with each other. And these steel sheets, they create a flow barrier, basically. So you have water on one side and a dry working condition on the other side. So that's a sheet pile. In some basic definitions that we're going to see in today's lecture. So first, uh, sheet pile, this is a hydraulic structure. And we define this lens direction. This is the axial direction. So this is the lens of the hydraulic structure, capital L. And then for all the subsequent analysis, uh, we're going to just focus on a unit cross-section of these sheet piles. We're going to look at just a unit width here. So basically, we're turning this into a 2D analysis. We just look at the unit width, see what happens there. And if we need to calculate the total flow quantity, which is time that by the total length L. So this is the sheet pile. And for flow net, this is a cross-section of that sheet pile. And also here, this is a complete flow net. And there are some basic definitions to set up this problem. First, of course, this is your retaining structure, that sheet pile. Again, this is just a unit uh, cross-section. And then on the left-hand side, this is a higher water table. That's capital H1. On the right-hand side, this is a lower water table. I use H2 here. So water is going to flow from this upstream higher water table, and it's going to exit from the downstream. Okay. So that's the direction of water flows. And notice water does not flow in straight line. So if you have a retaining structure this flow barrier, water is going to flow around this retaining structure in curved line. And this is our permeable soil. So water flows through this permeable soil in curved lines. And we have some impervious boundary underneath. And next, I'm going to define some basics about flow nets and what are these lines shown on this picture here. Okay. And one more thing, this total head loss we call capital H is the difference between up and downstream water table. So that's a total head loss. Next, I'm going to talk about some basic definitions of flow nets. So I'll start with these lines here. So see on the flow net, you have these solid and dashed lines. So there are basically two family of lines. The first is called flow lines. Water travels from upstream, so that's the higher water table side, to downstream impermeable soil along these flow lines. Okay. So that's the first family of lines we call flow lines. Using this flow net picture here around sheep house, so this solid line here, so I isolated just one flow line here. So this solid line, this is a flow line. So again, water travels from upstream to downstream along this flow line. Okay. So this is one flow line in the flow nets. Okay. And for that complete flow nets, there are a number of flow lines here. So all these solid lines, they are flow lines. Again, water travels from upstream to downstream along these flow lines. So that's the first family of lines we call flow lines. And the second type of lines in the flow net is called equal potential lines. Equal potential lines basically 
is uh, line with same potential. So the potential or the total head or the energy, which I'll refer to the same thing, is the same on an equal potential line. Again, going back to that flow net here. So this solid line, we know this is a flow line. And then the dashed line, this is called an equal potential line. So this equal potential line, as I just explained, any point on a single equal potential line has the same energy. If you put two piezometers, so let's look at these two locations, two points. If you put piezometers at these two locations, water is going to rise to the same height. You notice it rises to the same height. So the height of water column inside a piezometer above a reference datum that represents the total energy at that point. So basically, if they rise to the same point, these two points have the same energy, same potential. If you pick another point on the same equal potential line and you measure, you put up piezometer there, water is going to rise to the same level because it's on the same equal potential line. And then for this complete flow net, so all these red lines shown on this slide, these are equal potential lines of the flow net. So this is a second family of lines called equal potential lines. And then there are some additional definitions. The first one, this is called flow channels. So flow channels basically is a strip between any two adjacent flow lines. Um, again, the same flow net, these are flow lines. There's actually one here as well. And then the channel bounded by these two adjacent flow lines are called flow channels. And for this slide, for this flow net, we have four flow channels. So the number of flow channels for this flow net, NF equals four. So that's flow channels. Basically water flows inside these flow channels from upstream to downstream. And the next definition, this is called potential drops. And potential drop is basically the head difference or head loss between any two adjacent equal potential lines. In this delta H, potential drop we call delta H, is the same for any two adjacent equal potential lines on a given flow net. So delta H is the same for any two adjacent equal potential lines. So we can calculate delta H as, since it's the same for any two adjacent equal potential lines, we can use the total head loss capital H over the number of potential drops we call ND to get delta H. So that's delta H. ND here is the number of potential drops from upstream to downstream. So that's the total number of potential drops. Again, using the same flow net. So same picture here, a potential drop is the head loss between two equal potential lines. So we have one equal potential line and another one. And the head difference, the head loss between these two lines is the um, potential drop delta H. And then the number of potential drops for a given flow net, you can count it. So this is one potential drop from one equal potential line to the next, and then the next one, and then the next one. So for a given flow net here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. For this example flow net, we have six potential drops from upstream to downstream. So ND is six for this example. And the next definition is called flow elements. In flow elements, I highlighted one flow element here. And this is basically an element bounded by two flow lines. Okay, so these solid lines are flow lines and two adjacent equal potential lines. So this is one flow element. For this flow element, we call this L, small l. This is the length of the flow element along flow direction. Okay, so that's along flow direction. And we use small b here 
to indicate the width of this flow element, and this is perpendicular to the flow direction. And also shown on slide are these two delta Qs. So delta Q, these are flow quantities within that flow channel. So this is into this flow element, and this is delta QI out of the flow element. So they are the same because of the continuity of flow. So for this single flow element, you have delta Q in equals delta Q out. So that's a flow quantity. So that's flow elements. And then some other basic rules about flow nets. Uh, first, equal potential lines intersect impermeable boundaries at 90 degree angle. So using the same example here, so equal potential lines. So this is uh, that impermeable layer. So you have impermeable boundary along this bottom and equal potential lines intersect this impermeable boundary at 90 degree angle. So you can see all these equal potential lines they have a 90 degree angle with this impermeable boundary. Okay. So that's the first basic group. And then for isotropic soil, equal potential line intersects flow lines at approximately 90 degree angle here. So this is for isotropic soil. If it's an isotropic soil, these two lines, the flow line and equal potential lines, they intersect at 90 degree angle, but again, this is for isotropic soil only. And third one is, given the geometry of a seepage problem, you are immediately given two equal potential lines along water tables and two flow lines along impermeable boundaries. So I'm going to use, again, this same flow net here to illustrate these two lines. So first, these two equal potential lines. If you're given geometry of the seepage problem, you're immediately given two equal potential lines. The first one is parallel to the water tables. So that's line BA and line DE. And the second are two flow lines. And these two flow lines are along impermeable boundaries. The first impermeable boundary we just identified it's at the bottom. So this is actually one flow line. This is FG. So this is one flow uh, impermeable boundary. So that line is a flow line. And there is a second impermeable boundary is actually around this sheet pile. Remember this is a water, it's a flow barrier. So the water is, water is going to flow around this flow barrier. So that's A, C, and D. So this is another flow line around the, this uh, hydraulic structure. Uh, example one here, this is a very simple example. This is actually the second flow net I showed at the beginning. So this is a flow net underneath a concrete dam, a hydraulic structure here. And for this given flow net, so let's count NF, the number of flow channels, and ND, the number of potential drops from upstream to downstream. So first for NF, so that's the number of flow channels. And for this given flow net, we know these lines, these solid lines here, these are flow, uh, flow lines. So flow channel is basically bounded by two adjacent flow lines. So we know this is one flow channel. This is another one, three, four and five. And for this example, we have five flow channels. One, two, three, four, and five. So NF number of flow channels equals to five. And ND, that's the number of potential drops. So potential drops, remember that's basically the head loss between two equal potential lines. So this is one delta H. And when you cross the other one, that's another delta H. So that's two potential drops. And then you can count how many are there for this flow net. So each time you cross an equal potential line, that's one potential drop. So you have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there are a total of nine potential drops from upstream, upstream to downstream. And that by definition is empty. Again, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there are a total nine delta H from upstream to downstream. So ND equals to nine. So that's example one, a very simple example, just to illustrate how do you get NF and ND from this flow net. So that concludes the flow net basics. So these are some basic definitions what lines are on flow net, what are flow channels, and what are equal potential drops or potential drops. So next is how do we use flow net to basically solve seepage problem? 